Hi everyone, I'm Roberta. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist, specifically a clinical dietitian. And for all of you who are maintaining your weight or losing weight, are you using the concept of net carbs? If so, are you using the equation of total carbohydrate minus dietary fiber equals net carbs? Or are you using the equation total carbohydrate minus dietary fiber minus sugar alcohols equals net carbs. Well, it turns out as we're getting more information about the gut bacteria and the fact that the gut bacteria digests the soluble fiber or fermentable fiber, it turns out that these equations aren't totally accurate. And knowing that the majority of sugar alcohols also give us, on average, half the calories of regular sugar, a more accurate net carb equation would be this, total carbohydrate minus half the dietary fiber minus half the sugar alcohols equals net carbs. So in this video, I wanna show you the facts so that you can decide if you wanna do the net carbs the new way, do it the old way, or not use net carbs at all. Before I get started, I just wanna say a quick hi to Tom in Arizona. Hey Tom, how you doing? Hope you're staying hydrated. And also a hello to Chelsea, Scott, and Deborah and everyone else who's watching, thank you so much. As I was going through Target the other day, I saw that on the Atkins products, they list net carbs, but specifically say Atkins net carbs, like here in the Peanutty Overload bar. So after giving it a further look, I see how they calculate their net carbs. Their equation is total carbs minus fiber minus sugar alcohol minus allulose giving them three grams of Atkins net carbs. And the fact that they subtract allulose was something that I hadn't seen before, so I checked out the Atkins website, and sure enough, this is what's on the Atkins website. Net carb is total carbs minus fiber minus sugar alcohol minus allulose. From the Cleveland Clinic website, they say allulose is naturally occurring, found in figs, raisins, wheat, maple syrup, and molasses. And if you go to the last paragraph, the last sentence, it says, it is also not absorbed into the body and therefore does not contribute to your daily caloric intake. I wanted more proof that we didn't have to count allulose. So I went to the FDA website and the FDA says this, the FDA allows the low calorie sweetener allulose to be excluded from total and added sugars counts on nutrition and supplement facts labels when used as an ingredient. So what they're saying is, they don't have to list it under the total carbohydrate amount, which I find a little confusing because then how do we know how much allulose is being used in the product? So let's go back to the Atkins website and revisit their formula for net carbs. But what about that fiber and the sugar alcohol? How accurate is that, that they're subtracting all of it? Well, I need to show you what the American Diabetes Association says about net carbs. And they say, what are net carbs? Well, you might see it on some food packaging. The term net carbs does not have a legal definition and is not used by the Food and Drug Administration or recognized by the American Diabetes Association. I could understand why the American Diabetes Association does not recognize net carbs because to get a truly, truly accurate number for net carbs, we need to know the amount of soluble and insoluble fiber in a product. Here's what I mean about the two different types of fiber. The FDA has a really nice handout about dietary fiber. And so on most labels, just dietary fiber is listed. Dietary fiber is of two kinds. There are only two kinds of dietary fiber. It's either soluble fiber or insoluble fiber. Insoluble fiber, let's start there. It doesn't dissolve in water. That's what passes through your intestinal tract. That is not a source of calories. If you knew exactly the insoluble fiber amount of a product, yeah, you could completely subtract that from the carbs, but the products don't usually tell us that. Now the soluble fiber or fermentable fiber, and here is just a reminder that fermentable fiber is another name for soluble fiber. That is what the gut bacteria digests. And we see in the last sentence, it's broken down by bacteria in the large intestine and provides some calories. And how many calories is some calories? The answer to that is two. 
So a typical carbohydrate gives us four calories per gram, but this soluble fiber or fermentable fiber gives us two calories per gram, so half. So that's why in a little bit you're going to see why regarding fiber we're going to subtract half if you want to do the net carbs that way. So far what we've seen is the Atkins way of doing net carbs. Then we found out that the American Diabetes Association does not recognize net carbs. But now I want to show you what Medtronix, who is one of the major producers of insulin pumps, what they say about net carbs. So on the Medtronix website, and again Medtronix is one of the major manufacturers of insulin pumps. When a meal has more than five grams of total fiber, you can subtract half the total fiber from the total carbs. And then if a food contains sugar alcohols, you can subtract half the total sugar alcohol from the total carbohydrate. Why do they have that stipulation that when a meal has more than five grams of total fiber? And so I'm thinking that maybe that's because less fiber, you subtract half of it and you're not really gonna get that significant of a number. Maybe that's why. But that's too many rules for me to memorize. So I'm going to, regardless of what the fiber is, I'm gonna subtract half of it. What do you think? One last thing I wanna share with you about dietary fiber. I was going through the spaghetti aisle at Target and I happened to look at the pasta label and I was delighted to see that they actually divided the dietary fiber into its two parts. Dietary fiber is three grams and they divided it into its two types of fiber, soluble and insoluble. The soluble fiber, our gut bacteria digests half of it and the insoluble fiber that just passes right through us. You usually don't see it differentiated like that, but I thought that was kind of cool. On to the last part of the equation that we need to talk about, and that is the sugar alcohols. Here's a product on the Atkins website I wanted to share with you because I wanted to see which sugar alcohol it was using. So with the caramel chocolate nut roll, when we look at the ingredients, we see that that second ingredient, they're using maltitol. And according to the diabetes organization in the UK, they say that maltitol, I'm reading the first line, as a result, maltitol has just 2.1 calories per gram, nearly half of the caloric value of sucrose. So we see that if someone is using maltitol, it's going to give us half the calories. And then here I wanted to show you that the hospital at Yale University just reaffirms that sugar alcohols do give us calories, not as many calories as regular sugar, but still they say sugar alcohols contain less calories, 1.5 to 3 calories per gram. And the Mayo Clinic wants us to know something specific about erythritol that they have on their website, so I'm going to read it to you. A 2021 study examined people who consumed erythritol or a similar sugar alcohol xylitol. The results found that ingesting erythritol as a sugar substitute caused a spike in the blood levels and increased the stickiness of the volunteer's platelets. Platelets help the blood to clot if we cut ourselves, but if they are sticky, the risk of blood clots in the body increases, raising our risk of heart attack, stroke, or other vascular issues. So in the next paragraph at the very end, they say it may be best to avoid it until we have more evidence to suggest that it is or is not safe. So you can make your own decision about erythritol. So what are you going to do? Are you going to not do net carbs at all? Are you going to subtract half the fiber and half the sugar alcohols? Going forward, I'm going to subtract half the dietary fiber, and if it has any sugar alcohols, I'll subtract half of that as well. Let's look at one last label together using the new net carb calculation. So here we have fiber one bars, and the nutrition label shows us it has total carbohydrate, 29 grams, dietary fiber, 9 grams, and there are no sugar alcohols here. So with the dietary fiber, we now know that some of it is digested by the gut bacteria, so we'll subtract half of the fiber, which is four and a half, I'm just gonna round it up to five. So 29 minus five is excellent. 24 grams of carbs. So if you eat this product, you've used up 24 carbs of whatever your limit is.
Thank you so much for spending time with me. I really appreciate it. And until next time, take good care of yourself. Bye.